So I am going to put my list back up here because today I'm going to add to it. Anybody remember what was on our list in terms of property? The log of base would be to the new X Exactly. So an example of that, just as, just as a quick review, if you have the log of a thousand, remember log means log base 10, right? And a thousand is 10 cubed. So the answer to that question would just be three? Okay, so that's just an example of that. All right, I, I think we had a couple more, didn't we? Or at least one more. Log base B of the log of one is always zero regardless of base. So if you had the log base six of one, the answer would be zero. If you had the log base 12 of one, the answer would be zero. The log of one is always zero. And then did we have another one? We had B to the log to the X. Yeah, that is um, kind of the same idea as this one that if the base of the logarithm and the base of the exponent match, they're inverse operations, so they cancel each other out, and the answer is just not left over number. So the base of the exponent, the base of the logarithm match. So something like that would look like this. 8 to the log base 8 of 12. The answer to that problem is 12. Right? 16 to the log base 16 of root 7 would be root 7. Now today we're going to add to that list, and I think you'll remember these. Um, take a look on page 317 at problem number two. It says, rewrite this as a sum or difference or multiple of logarithms. Does anybody remember how you could separate this problem. You can actually pull it apart. Anybody remember how that works? This is a product. When you take the logarithm of a product, it's the sum of the logarithms. Do you remember, do you remember that from last year? Yeah. That whenever you have the logarithm of a product, two things times each other, you can pull that apart and make it the <coughs> sum. Now, it actually works backwards too. So if I had, you know, the log of x plus the log of 4, I could put those together and what would they become? The log of what? 4x. Four four x. X. So the, the property works both ways. You can either take a product and pull it apart into a sum, or you <coughs> can take a sum and squish it together as a product. So in terms of our property list, that's going to look like this. The log base b of mn equals the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. And it goes both ways. Now, what do you think? Kind of just think here a little bit. Look at number four. It's the log of 2 over y. How do you think you might separate that, pull that apart? It wouldn't come apart as a sum. It'll come apart as a difference. So it's going to be the log of 2 minus the log of y. And that one works both ways, too. So if you were solving an equation and you had something like this, um, the log of x minus the log of p, you could put those together, and what would that become? Exactly. Exactly. So in our list, <coughs> the log base b of m over n is the log of m minus the log of n. Now, you aren't going to be confused by this because you know that when numbers are multiplied, their exponents are added. Well, when numbers are multiplied, their logarithms are added. The properties of exponents are the same as the properties of logarithms. Good. And then, 
look at number eight, because there's a couple of things going on in number eight. happening right here? Well, here it's multiplication, but when I pull it apart, it's going to become an addition, right? Is everybody okay with that first step? <coughs> now, we've talked about this a lot. What happens to that exponent there? What do we get to do with that exponent? He gets to come out in front Remember, that's allowed us to solve some equations we wouldn't have otherwise been able to solve. So our answer, finally, after we get everything done here, is going to be the log of x plus 3 log y's. So the next property I want to add says the log base b of m to the nth will equal what? The log base b of m to the nth will equal n log base b of m. Very, very good. That's exactly right. You can take the exponent and pull it off front. Now, that works both ways, too. If you happened upon this, if that were in some equation you were solving, <coughs> what can you do with that 3? If you don't like him there, where can you put him? He can be put on as an exponent. These properties work both ways. You can either tear them down or build them back up, whichever um, is appropriate for the problem that you're doing. Okay? Let's look at um, um, oh, let's look at number 12. What's the first thing you might want to consider when you look at number 12. <coughs> you can make it a subtraction problem. So it would be ln cube root of x minus ln cube root of y. Can you do that three? What? Can you make it a three ln? Okay, you, it's, it wouldn't be a 3. Yeah, what you need to do is get rid of those radicals. Remember, there's no radicals in logarithm land, folks. So we got to get rid of those. Now, it's okay not to get rid of them right off the bat. This is an okay first step. But then you're going to want to rewrite this. And how are you going to rewrite the cube root of x? Well, you're getting ahead of me. What's the first step before I get to that? x to the 1 third. Yep. <coughs> now, I don't care if you skip that step on your own, that's fine, but I'm, I want to show what's going on here. So we have ln x to the one-third minus ln y to the one-third. Now those exponents can come out in front, and this would be the answer to the question. In these questions, you're really not solving anything. They're just asking you to break this apart. Then in the next set, Take a look at number 19. They're asking you to put it all back together. So using the same properties, now you're going to put it all back together. Anyone have an idea how to start this? What the first step would be? The first thing we probably want to do is put that on as an exponent. Now, when I put it on as an exponent, it doesn't change. It stays 2. So it's going to be ln x squared plus <coughs> ln y cubed. Then they can be combined. And when I combine them, there will be 1 ln. And then what's going to be in here? x squared, x squared y cubed. Times y cubed exactly. When you put them together, they become a multiplication. The addition becomes a multiplication. All right, let's try one more, and then we'll have one more thing, and then we'll get you up here to the board to practice. Um, well, what about 22? That looks kind of ugly. 
So 22, we're supposed to be putting it all back together. Okay, so what's your thought on that? Perry? Um, well, we're going to move the three in front of the LN, so are, are we? We are. Okay. We are. And where are we going to move it? To the X and the Y? Exactly. It's going to become an exponent. I'm going to do that in two steps. You could do it in one, certainly on your own, but that's that's going to become an exponent on this parentheses. And then it's going to apply to both of these. So I'm really going to have ln x to the Okay. Okay. Six. Six. Which one is it? It's nine. 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 Okay. Now, boys and girls, we need to, if, if we can't keep the properties straight, we need to, over to the side, we need to sort it out. This means x cubed three times, right? So if you think about that, how many is it? Nine. nine. Someone said six, but we're going to ignore that. It's nine. Okay, and then y cubed? Yes. Okay. Now, how about this one? We're going to do the same thing. We are. And it's going to become ln yz squared squared? Yes. And then that square is going to apply to both of these, so we're going to have ln y squared z to the fourth. And you're not done. It's a great first step. What still needs to be done? Muleman? Uh, you have to do the same thing with the other side. Or no, you have to change the adding. Okay, it's an add now. Right, but you have to change the, like, the number. Well, I want to come back. <laughs> There's no extra for that. I should take away points for that. They, you, we want to put this together into one logarithm. So what's going to happen to these two things? Since the logarithms are being added, these, when I squish them together, are going to be multiplied. So we're going to have x9y cubed y squared z4 all clumped together in one big product. So what about that? The x to the ninth. <laughs> Why to the fifth? And again, kids, if you cannot remember the properties, just think about it. What have we got here? Three y's. What have we got here? Two more y's. How many y's do we have? Five. Five. All right, well, you can practice some of those. Um, we have one more thing to talk about, and then we'll get you up here and let you do some stuff at the board. Here's the last thing we need to talk about. Um, take a look at problem 24. Problem 24 <coughs> says the log base 5 of 19. It says, what does that equal? Now, you all have a wonderful calculator that has two logarithm buttons, right? What are the two logarithm buttons that you have? You have LOG, which means what base? 10. And you have LN, which means what base? E. e. So you do not have a button on your calculator. Actually, that's not totally true. Some of the newer calculators do have a uh, a change base or change base mechanism, but for most of us, we don't have a base five button on our calculator. So if we want to evaluate this, if we want to know what does this equal, we need to change it to one of the bases that we can type into our calculator, and that is very simple to do. Here is how I would. Here, here's the math behind it, and then we'll just talk about the shortcut. The math behind it is. Here's the problem. We want to know what it equals. So we could translate this into this equation. Would you agree with me? 5 to the x is 19. Now, I can take the logarithm of both sides. 
and you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, Ms. Ford, you just got rid of the logarithm. Well, I got rid of the base 5 logarithm, and now I'm putting in base <coughs> 10 so that I can type it in on my calculator. The exponent will come out in front, and I can divide. Now we've done some of this, so did any of those steps bother anybody? Were you able to follow all those steps? So what I'm ultimately going to type into my calculator is this. Now that's still the way I do every one of these problems, but it will always be the case. Look at the original problem. This was the original problem. Look at the answer. It will always be the case, kids, always, that you're going to take the log of that number divided by the log of that number. So, you don't have to do so if you can remember that, keep it straight, I mean, obviously, if you do this over this, you're going to miss it, but if you do this, the log of this number over the log of this number, you will always get the right answer. That's called the change of base formula. You changed from base 5 into base... 10 so that you could type that in on your calculator. Now, would everybody do that for me real quick? Would you type log 19 over log 5? And just get a decimal. You don't have to tell me what it is. Just get that decimal. Um, remember, you need to close the parentheses around the 19 before you hit divided by log 5. Okay, did everybody get a number for that? Okay, now, when I went to this step right here, I had this, 5 to the x equals 19. I took the log of both sides. What if I would have ln both sides? If I would have ln both sides, do you see that I would have ended up with ln 19 over ln 5? Yeah. Type that in on your calculator. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to get the same thing. Because the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter what base you use, the answer will be the same. Why am I using either base 10 or base E? Because those are the buttons on my calculator. But if I wanted to do base 3, I could do base 3 or 12, any base I wanted. But I'm always going to do either LOG or LN so that I can type it in on my calculator. Did you get the same answer? Yeah. Yeah, good. Question? Um, will you tell us on like what decimal place to round yeah. to? Yeah. Because yeah. all these, you'll have to round all these. What I don't want you doing is rounding intermediately. In other words, I, want, I don't want you typing in log 19, getting some decimal, then typing in log 5, getting some decimal, and then dividing those. I want you to do this all in one step. But yeah, you'll have to round off your answer. Okay, so that was 24. 26 says the log base is 12 of 259. Your job is to evaluate that. So if we just go straight to our shortcut, what am I going to type into my calculator? Log 259 divided by log 12. If you don't want to use the shortcut, you'll follow these steps right here and you will get exactly the same answer. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. All right, well, tonight you're going to get to practice a few problems like that. It should be pretty easy, I think. Tonight's problem should be pretty easy. What about... Jimmy Christmas. Sorry. What about last night's homework? Was there any issue with last night's homework? It was so long ago, because I'm sure you just come there and you might get it again. Yeah. I had it done before it left school. What? I, yeah, I did it in resource I did get it done. Uh, All right, have a great day. See you right, don't run anybody over.